I would just like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territories of West Sanic, Lukwangan, and Songhees, and the Esquimalt speaking peoples. Um, you know, we're all uninvited guests, and we're all, well, not all of us, but you know, we all have a bit of colonizer, and we all got to acknowledge that unceded is, means that, like, there was no treaty and there was no nothing saying that they, they gifted this land to us. So please keep that in mind and that we're uninvited. Okay. Uh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Eric, uh, Ukrainian uh, immigrant, settler, uh, anarchist myself, and um, yeah, so the first topic that I would like to speak about is essentially anarchism, the principles and tendencies that they follow through with. So in the recent uh, court of events, I just um, thought that anarchism is a, an outlook that has been definitely uh, under mentioned, if not mentioned at all. Uh, as anarchists in, the, rec in, in these, the recent events, we oppose any possible signs of authoritarian structures as well as the uh, forced wars that has been happening in the Eastern Europe, as well as many other conflicts, uh, bombings that have been happening. So the first and foremost core of anarchism is always the opposition to authoritarian structures and, author and the essence of uh, the authoritarian existence itself. Anarchism is a social philosophy, an outlook, not an ideology. It's um, a mindset that one adopts when one becomes aware of their uh, state, of their the position in the class uh, the society and uh, so on. So anarchism is essentially a doctrine which seeks to embolden and embrace the free association that thrives in all of us. It seeks to eliminate and destroy uh, hierarchical and uh, uh, dominatory uh, structures of the state, capitalism, economic and social privilege, as well as any other, any other coercive uh, structures that were created mainly by people. And some of the tendencies, it focuses mainly on the labor notion, so the uh, labor equity and labor justice uh, in the name of the working people, in which it advocates for the working people to seek uh, justice against the state, capitalism, and uh, so forth. So anything that can possibly subjugate workers to um, involuntary and coercive hierarchical the relations. And as we understand the state uh, itself thrives uh, as an organ in uh, hierarchy and domination over the people, it seeks to impose the political power on the masses so as anarchists, we stand solely against that, uh, that and against any possible economic and social privileges that might be imposed on people as well. We seek full justice and uh, equality uh, for the queer and uh, uh, people of color and uh, trans people because we recognize that this is an important element that needs to be mentioned that is actually not mentioned enough uh, we do not just focus on the labor initiative or the labor topic, we go beyond this. Uh, we adopt, in some of the cases, an anti-work stance in which we kind of attempt to eliminate the best way that we can uh, coercive work or involuntary work. So we really attempt to strive in free association and uh, free wrongdoing. So we do not make promises to anyone. All we essentially want is for people to realize their the position in the society and who their masters are so that they be able to re revolt against them, to say the least, and uh, rebel if possible. So yeah, so this is essentially an outlook that connects all people in solidarity with each other and that seeks to permanently disrupt and destroy 
the hierarchical, dominatory, and um, authoritarian structures that have been imposed on us by the state, by capitalism, colonialism, and so forth. It seeks full equality, it seeks full justice for all people, like and animals, in fact, as well. If, in regards to wildlife and the environment, it plays um, a very big role. The green anarchism plays a big role in that sense. It's actually the main uh, ideology that focuses on that tendency. Um, and there are a lot of different um, details and tendencies and ideas that kind of connect anarchism together, but anarchism as a whole is essentially people themselves. So people realizing that they must take freedom, liberation in their own hands instead of waiting for a revolution to come or waiting for somebody else to come and save you. So it's essentially you doing your part in liberating yourself and helping others as well. So it's solidarity, the community care, uh, opposition to authoritarian structure events, and uh, yeah, all, all this. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. That was awesome. All right, in the next bit, we'll be announcing our statement on the Freedom Convoy, the Freedom Convoy, and for this, we'll be asking Luke to come over and announce our statement on the Freedom Convoy. There are a lot of things that warrant anger and frustration and disillusionment. We have a housing crisis, we have an opioid crisis, we have a climate crisis. The government's response to COVID-19, in my opinion, and most people's opinions, I'm sure, has not been adequate. We've had a lot of evictions. We've had a lot of people lose their livelihoods or their lives. Uh, but we condemn white nationalism and we believe that you can be disillusioned and organized against the state without being a white supremacist or associating yourselves with white supremacy or the Canadian flag, which is a symbol of genocide and exploitation. That's, that's it. That's, that's all can I have you, to say. Can you that. say it again? I, I just honestly, because it's so important. Can you just uh, express that again? Just, in, just, oh, just generally yeah. say it again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I understand uh, why everyone is angry. I understand how people are a part of the Freedom Convoy. Uh, your anger is righteous but misplaced. Um, you need to be angry at the state, not nostalgic for a past that never really existed. Um, associating yourselves with people like Pat King that uh, buy into conspiracy theories about white genocide stuff. You know, <laughs> that's really not great. That's not cool. Um, and I, I, it's, it, it's difficult for me to take uh, protests seriously when it talks about uh, freedom and state tyranny when you have a Canadian flag draped around your shoulders. Uh, this is something that police repression, uh, indigenous people have been dealing with since the conception of Canada, and to only see middle class people now get frustrated at a uh, vaccine passport mandate is just so unequivocally privileged. So for a lot of people, I know that the convoy is their first interaction with activism. Um, so I think us offering a solution that is like, we hear you and you are, have a right to be angry, but pulling them away from uh, rhetoric draped again in the Canadian flag is important. Right on, man. Yeah. Thank you for stating it again. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Does anyone have any questions or anything? No? Okay. Go cool, around. Thank you, man. Yeah, no worries. Let's all thank Mario for that wonderful, wonderful word. Yeah, man. 
So, I'm going to be talking about current issues and updates about Ferry Creek and, and other campaigns for land back and indigenous sovereignty and rights. So, if you're not up to date with the Ferry Creek blockade, like Facebook page or Instagram or anything, currently uh, there is a court case that is happening to where all the charges that have ever happened at Ferry Creek will just disappear if it gets, like it got approved the other day, and so now they're going to court, and now they're going to court to see if all the charges will be dropped. And it's, it's a very, it was very nice to hear that, you know, that it got approved and everyone was so excited because, you know, we've been really wanting this and all the abuse and just stuff that the RCMP has put onto us, especially the BIPOC people, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, that's, you know, a little update about what's going on at Fairy Creek if you're not, you know, in the loop. Yeah. I, so I, I basically had none to little, um, what you call it, uh, help organizing with this, not because I wasn't included, but because I totally forgot. So I don't <laughs> have a speech. I, That's okay. That's I don't awesome. have anything prepared. So I'm just kind of winging it. From the heart. Um, but some other indigenous land back and like indigenous sovereignty organizations and just like movements that are currently happening are Wessotan, up in Wessotan territory up on the mainland. Um, they're trying to build a pipeline, the Canadian government, and it, people there are opposing that for an honestly good reason. It's their land, it's their decision, and it's just ridiculous. I don't know why I keep on looking at this paper. There's nothing on it. <laughs> I, I just feel like looking at it will. <laughs> You're doing great.